YouTube, I'm ABC, and today I'm making this tutorial for you guys. In today's Java tutorial, we're going to be talking about basic logic. Now, logic is a pretty major thing in programming. You, when you learn about logic, you'll be able to make your program think more for themselves, and you can, with logic, you can make your programs develop on, the, on their own, and really the possibilities are um, explored at this point. You can do all kinds of stuff. Like in games all the time, it'll, it'll check whether, it, when you're moving around, it'll check whether there's a solid in front of you, but to check whether you can still move. In a lot of other games, it will t check the distance from, from the enemy, the distance you are from the enemies, to check whether the AI should attack you or not. And there's all kinds of areas where, it basically, where logic is used. So today, I'm going to teach you about a couple of logical operators, and logical operators are what's used to organize the logic in your code. And the three ones to talk about today are if, else, and switch. So if and else sort of go hand in hand. But it works to start with by typing down if, and then you put down parentheses, and in between the parentheses you put down condition you want to check. And you would put down something like if this variable equals this. And there's more syntax involved in that, but I'll, I'll be talking about that later. And then after you get the parentheses and condition down, you put down pointy brackets, and in between the pointy brackets you put down what you want to happen. Maybe you want to set this variable equal to, the, equal to this, or you want to form more complex action, could be anything. And then after the pair of pointy brackets, you type down else, another pair of pointy brackets, and between those is what you want to happen if the condition is not met. And the same thing there, it could, could be anything that goes between those, it's just anything you want to happen that, if the condition is not met. Now there's another one to talk about with switch. Now if is used when you have a sort of situation where you're like, um, if this is happening, do this, otherwise, do this. And switch is more used if you have, you'd say, Okay, if this variable equals this, do this. This variable equals this one, do that. This variable equals this, do that. And, and the list could go on and on like that. So the way you do switch is you have type down switch and type down the variable you want to run the switch on. And then you put a point bracket. In between the point brackets, you put down a list of things that say different situation that occurs. So you put down case zero. If the variable equals zero, do this. Case one. Variable equals one, do this. And that's how switch works. And we're going to learn about all of this, and then, and now I'm going to teach you how to use all three of them, all three of these different logical operators in this tutorial. All right, so I've already named the class. Now we're going to um, put in the same old class code. Now for the main method, um, I believe I may have switched th these brackets from after the string for the args. That's a property of arrays that we'll learn later, but these brackets can go either after the string, um, after args. All right. So first off, we're, I'm going to I'm going to use the, um, something we learned from basic input, and I'm using it a lot now because I, I, I use it a lot in, when I'm programming stuff. So now that we're past that, I'm going to take advantage of it. So we're going to type down string pet is it equal to args zero. So the first argument they put down is going to be a our pet. And this time it's going to be type of pet and not the name of the pet. Okay? So now we're going to start with our first basic logic operate logical operator. That's going to be the if statement. And this is the setup of the if statement. You have if, then two parentheses, and two pointy brackets. In between the parentheses goes your condition. So if you put down if, so if this, do this. Some practical examples. In Mario, if you're pressing up and there's solid below you, you can jump. For Pac-Man, if you press right and there's no solid to the right. So that, that would be how if statements work. So what now we're going to check is if pet equals no pet. Because if um, you don't have a pet, we want to operate differently than if you did have a pet. So if pet dot equals no pet. And remember this needs to be in quotations because that is a string right there. No pet. Okay? So th so this will return this method right here will return true or false. If it return if it returns true, then it will execute what's in between these brackets, and if it returns false, it won't execute it. There's some more things I I should probably need to tell you about conditions that I won't be using in this story but are still rather important. One of them being with primitive data types, it doesn't work the same. You don't need a method to do it. So rather than using method, you put down equals equals in between the variable and the value that you're checking in order to check it. So an example would be... So 
if you put equals equals sign in order to check it. And another thing. But the brilliant thought is you don't even need to put down equals equals, so it would look more like this. There you go. And then one more thing I need to tell you is that there are other logic logical operators that are still also rather important. So if you want to, to test multiple variables, you would use So these statements um, are used when you're testing most multiple variables, or those logical operators. So it could be something like if uh, x equals equals 5. So if you use the and, and symbols, this statement as a whole will only return true if both x equals 5 and x and, I'm an idiot, y equals 6. And then for the next one, What this one means is if x equals 5 or y equals 6 return true. So it'll return true if either one of these is, is true. These are all the logical things that you need to be comfortable with and be familiar with. And now we'll proceed, just know that you need to use a method for things that aren't primitive data types. For, for non-primitive data types you have to use this stuff. And um, this part applies for non-primitive data types as well. So if you want to test two strings, these, these apply as well. All right, so we got the if, if the condition taken down. Now we're going to work on our statement. If you input no pet, we want to write down that you don't have a pet. So simple stuff that you've been learning from day one, system.out.println, you don't have any, there you go. You don't have any pets. That's what we want to say if you put no pet. Okay, next logical thing, else. So else is often uh, attached on to the end of the if statement. It's not always done, but it can be. And what it means is if the condition returns true, do this thing in the if statement. And if it doesn't return true, meaning true returns false, do this other thing. This is a good brain exercise. If you don't have a pet, what's the opposite of that? That means we do have a pet. So this is what we want to happen if it turns out you do have a pet. So we want to come up with a number that represents how many of the pet you have. So we can say int how many. So we're going to call the variable, and we're going to set it equal to integer.parse int args1. Okay, last tutorial we, we used the method byte.parse byte, but this time we're working with the int, so we got to change it to integer.parse int. So this, this converts string over to an int, but th they have a, a similar method like that, that that can be used for any period of data type, for, for, I believe. So next we're going to create a string called how many, and put a little s behind it because otherwise if we just name it the same thing we'll get an error. So what this does is just brings the string to existence without setting equal to anything. So if we try to print this out, we'd get an error, but we're going to set equal to something now. So next logical thing we've taught you about if, else, next we're going to talk, teach you about is switch. The way switch is similar to um, if, where they have the switch and you have, in between the parentheses goes which variable you want to run the switch on, and then after this what you want to do with that variable. So the variable has to be an int, that's why we made how many an int value, and so that we can say down case, for instance, one semicolon. And this says if how many is equal to one, do what comes after the semicolon. Then we can go down through through all any all the numbers, so case two, we can say case three, etc. etc. So this is basically the same thing as putting down different bunch of if else statements. I'll put that little comment saying that. You can use switch with a bunch of if if statements, but it's more efficient, especially when you have a lot of things with a switch. So like here in the comment I put down that this is the same as that. Okay. So now, um, so what we want to do with this is we want to convert this to a string value. So if we want, if it's, if uh, how many equals one, we want how many underscore s to be a string. So, um, o and e, which I spell one. So if if equals one, we put down uh, how many s equals one like that and then I'll copy this and I'll keep going down the line so here 2 equals 2 or 3 equals 3 like so on and then I'll copy this whole thing and we'll go through it like I guess I'll go one more time 6 out good enough and so that's 4 5 6 and 
don't forget that you gotta have these with the corresponding numbers as well. Alright, simple enough. And then at the end of, once you've gone through all, all the cases you want to go through, you can type on def default and the number necessary. And default is what it'll go with if it goes through all of these cases and it doesn't find anything. You want how many under underscore s to equal more than six. And we're done, we're done with the switch thing, but we're still in the statement, or we're still in the else statement saying that you don't have no pets, meaning you do have pets. We want to type down, um, tell them how, what pets, you, what pet you have, and how many of them. So system out the print. First off, we're gonna say you have how many s. Make sure you put the s at the end to show that you're working with the string rather than the the integer. Because I just made a mistake, mistake just now. You don't know because I edited it out, but uh, yes, I did make a mistake just now. And then, so how many s? And they put we put another string in there, which is gonna be one space. And then we're gonna say, I'm gonna go to the next line for one thing. And then we're going to say, you have so many space plus pet. Remember the string is set up way in the beginning up, way in the beginning up here. That's gonna be the first argument. And then. I'm gonna put a little s and s there because we're, I'm assuming we're gonna put in pet as a non-plural and put an s to make it plural. And the problem is it'll work with dogs and cats, but if we put down fish, putting s at the end won't, won't make it plural. But I guess I'll just have with that grammatical mistake, and I'll put a period on there to try and make up for the bad grammar. So put that symbol there, and I still don't know what the symbol is called. I've been I think I called it semicolon once or twice this this um, tutorial. But I'm pretty sure that's not what it is. So previous tutorials, I've I don't know if I'm using calling it semicolon every time. I completely so what my was called. So we're gonna save it and we're gonna run it. So compile it. Let's hope it compiles with no errors. Good. And now we're gonna run it. And remember, we can't press under after we want to run it. We have to um, put an argument. So now when we put down no pet. It sh should register that we don't need pets, and it's not gonna even care how many of them. Good, you don't have any pets. That's that's what we want to do. And next, I'm gonna say dog, and let's say I have six of them. It says you have more than six dogs, which it shouldn't. All right, I'm gonna have to look up what the problem is. Um, switch. Okay, let's look it up, and it's incredibly embarrassing. It looks like I got my, I got my syntax switch wrong. So the reason why it put down more than six dogs, even though I only put down six or five, as the case may be, is because it's it's thinking that it can be equal to multiple things. So it, so um after let's say case one, it'll check case one. It'll it'll set how many s equal to one if it's if um it, case one is indeed true, and then it'll go on the next one. Um, thinking to try and look for something else and then it'll keep going down the line until it gets default and Then it'll default will always work So we want to make sure that it ends it if it finds the right one so the way we're gonna do that is type down break That way it'll break out of the switch. You can also use this for loops. I believe don't quote me on that But yeah, I believe you can also use that for, for loops. I'll I'll verify that next tutorial So and we're gonna put put down break after each one to make sure that it'll stop right afterwards It should work now. Hopefully um, we're gonna recompile it. There we go. Okay. So, and that works. It put down six, which means it went with with k six as it should because the integer how many is gonna be equal to six. And if we put down four, it converts it over to the word four as well. And if we put down seven, it says you have more than six. Okay. That was that was scary. All right, and incredibly embarrassing on my part. So, now that we've got that taken care of. Let's see if you understood this better than me and can complete the challenge. Which is going to be a fun one, I think you'll like it. For today's challenge, you are going to make a program where you can look up Minecraft item codes. Minecraft item codes can be used on servers um, to, so you can spawn items. So you type in the item code, then you can spawn the item. And if you want to spawn an item but you don't know the code, you have to look it up online usually. But with this program, it should be looked up in this program and hopefully it'll be a little bit easier. 
So I called my program archive items, and it requires two arguments. The first argument is whether you can input a name and want the ID, or if you can put, put in the ID and want a name. So zero means you want to put in the name and want the ID, and I only put five different things in there, but and one of them is diamond pickaxe. So the ID for diamond pickaxe is 278. And I also put in a few more. So I put in steak as well. And ID for steak is 364. So that's that's how it works that way around. And if you type in one, or really the way I put anything other than zero, um, it will, you can do it the way around. So I can put down uh, 368, and that's ender pearl. And I can type down 319. That'll give me raw pork chop. So um, I, I want you to make, make this program. Uh, make sure you use both if statements and switch. It's easiest to use b both of them, but if you you can get away with it using just if if statements. And uh, I want to make sure you understand both of them. And also have it work for at least five different items. You can um, do it for all of it if you want, but that's your choice. But by the way, if you if you decide to do it for for all of them, um, please leave a re video response showing us your program, so we can uh, comment and like like it because that that'll be interesting to see how many um, if you really went in and inputted for all 200 plus items. So that's all for my tutorial. Please like and comment on this video to or to support the the, um, the channel. And if you would like to be notified next time I make a tutorial, please subscribe. If you uh, found this challenge helpful, uh, I have more than my website, sinforge.co. You can also find my games and my, a list of my tutorials on that website. And that's all I have to say, so thanks for watching.